everyone, it's Jackie again, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create these amazing diamond earrings using Autodesk Fusion 360. I came up with this class because I absolutely love my diamond earrings. I love the sparkle, I love the twinkle, I love everything about jewelry in general, so that's why I came up with this tutorial. Alright, so here's the workspace for Autodesk Fusion 360. First, we need to create the base shape of our diamond earring. Create a new sketch on the top plane using the inscripted polygon tool. Start in the center and create a 25 millimeter diameter circle and select 16 sides for our polygon. Now select the shape and we are going to extrude it one millimeter up to obtain a flat base for our earring. We need a second extrusion so we can start adding some details to our diamond. This time we don't need to create a sketch because Autodesk Fusion 360 automatically extrudes the surface we want to use. We set this distance to 4.5 millimeters, and this time we set the taper angle at negative 35 degrees to increase the complexity of the shape and the number of the surfaces. Set the operation in your pop-up menu, Join, to have a single body, and the first layer is now complete. Next, we will increase the number of surfaces we created. We need to create a new plane using the Plane Through Three Points tool under the Construction section of the top menu. We select one by one the points and the new plane is generated. Pay attention that the new element created appears also under the construct label of your left menu. Now we use this plane to create a new sketch using the line tool. We create a triangle through the three point we used before. You can see that the sketch goes through the body of the diamond. This is super important because to increase the number of the surfaces, we need to cut away a slice of the diamond body to create facets. Select the extrude tool and we set our triangle as the profile. If necessary, use the selection filter to help yourself properly select the sketch. Now set the distance to 10 millimeters and make sure to set the operation to cut and press OK. As you can see, where before there were two surfaces, we now have three, and where there were once two edges, we now have one. Now we need to repeat this operation all around the shape. We can actually use the pattern tool found under the create section of our top menu. We select as objects the new surface we just created, and we set the axis to the vertical one. That is the green one, and we want eight sets, so be sure to set the number here. Because just as I explained before, before where we had two edges, we now have one, which means that we moved from a 16 side shape to an eight sided one. And here we are, our first row of facets are now done. To create the next layer, we need to repeat all the operations we just did. First, we need to create a new extrusion. This time we don't need to create a new sketch. We only need to select the top surface and extrude. Set this distance to 2 millimeters and the taper angle at negative 60 degrees. Be sure to set the operation as join like we did before to increase the number of surfaces. This time we need to set the middle point of the edges creating a new sketch on the surface. When the light blue triangle appears it means that you correctly snap to the middle point. Repeat the operation with the next surface. We need to convert these two points in vertex so we can use them to create a new plane. To do this, we need to select the Point at Vertex tool found under the construction section in the top menu. Once converted, the vertex appears in your left menu under the label construct. Once you converted both the points of the vertex, we're ready to create a new plane like we did before using the Plane Through Three Points tool. Each time you create a new construction element, this will appear in your left side menu under the label construct so you can check if you correctly made your new shapes and cutouts. Now we need to create a new sketch on this new plane. The vertex of the triangle are the same points we used to create the new plane. Now we can extrude and cut away another slice of our 3D model to increase the complexity. Once again, in case you need it, use the selection filter tool to select properly on your sketch. 
We are ready to use the circular pattern to repeat this operation all around the diamond shape. Select the extrude tool and we set our triangle as the profile. Again, set your axis, the vertical green one, and your quantity to 8. And now our second layer of our diamond is done. So this last layer now is really easy since we only have to repeat the same operations we've already done so far. So for my diamond, I'm only repeating the extrusion step, but if you want, you can totally repeat the cut extrusion to increase the complexity. And for this last layer, I'm using 2 millimeters and negative 75 degrees to angle my taper. And here we are. Here's our diamond earring. It's all done. Congratulations, you've created these amazing diamond earrings. With these skills, you can now start creating all sorts of jewelry, whether it be earrings, necklaces, bracelets, rings. So you can check out kirakira.com to get inspired and learn new skills. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.